Okay, okay. okay. it's on. All right, so I would like to call to order the Finance Committee. Um, it is January 21st. I'm joined by Finance Committee members Ballerin, O'Brien, and Deshay. I'm also joined by our President Pro Tem, Kimbrough, our, oh, and uh, member Conti. Um, for staff, we have our wonderful Legis I, what is your title? Research Council. Research, research Council. There you are. It's going to come up with something, but um, Research Council is good. Um, John Raphael, and we have Nick Riley from the Budget Office. Um, I'm expecting Michelle to pop back in, and that is everyone. Um, before we dive into our bonding ordinances, I just wanted to give everyone a heads up in your packet of information you will find um, a couple of things on the vets, the veterans exemption. And um, Trey, when he was going through, um, he realized that since the 90s, we've been um, giving the wrong exemption. We don't actually have um, the authority to give this exemption for New York State. So. Um, what they have is for um, combat or for veterans to have a 10% exemption and then um, for combat veterans to have a total of a 25% exemption. But the way it's worded, um, they looked at it in the 90s and so we give a 35% exemption. And it's been like that um, since the 90s. So it's, it's part of the way we have done it. Um, we would need to have a bill to actually allow us to do this. This is the annual trade. We have to correct our exemptions. Yes. Um, so I talked to Trey. I said maybe perhaps what we can do is um, put together a letter asking our elected officials to draft a bill to allow us um, to do this. But then um, I also said that I can put in legislation to um, basically direct him to continue to do that despite New York State law. Um, so that kind of covers him and also puts it out there that we should be actually following this law, but we are giving him the authority not to. Um, there is no, uh, I said, well, what is the repercussions for this? There are no repercussions and they basically, it sounds like when he's talked to people, they're like, you can just keep doing it. And he's like, well, I really shouldn't keep doing it so but, but do we follow the not to exceed sixty thousand dollars that i don't know um i can certainly find out okay. about that but um i would assume so because that's pretty explicit but. so we put something in our code that is not authorized by the state statute correct yes. and and he's people are telling him that we can just tell him that that's okay for him to continue doing what's in our code even though our code is in violation of the statute uh, people are telling him to not that he doesn't need to worry about it, that there's no repercussions for it. Um, but it, it's not, they're not saying that that's okay. So I recommended that to provide him coverage until we're able to correct it by statute. Otherwise, they have to change what they're charging combat veterans and actually charge them more in taxes, which I believe none of us want. So. Um, it's not anything that we need to act on currently. Um, I just wanted to give you guys the heads up on that. So we'll be seeing something along those lines as we move forward. Um, so on our bonds, I just wanted to note that we no longer have to look at the roadway striping because um, the budget department has said that the 150 is fine. Um, which, no, which one is that? Which we've, that's 21.101.19. The first one. The yes. first one. Um, yeah, so, because 22. we, we already, yeah. I'm sorry, 22, yes. Um, we already passed that through the committee at 150,000. Okay. So, uh, I am not sure exactly what we need to do to adjust that for the floor, but, um. I'll just email Sarah. Great. So, just. 
to be clear, so we're passing it for only 150. Correct? Or we're not passing it at all? We we don't need to pass it out of committee because it's already been passed out of committee at 150,000. The only reason we were bringing it back is because um, the leadership had requested that the 225 amount, and so we would have to pass that back through committee. But at 150,000, it's already been passed through the committee. But the council so, didn't, so didn't vote on it. The council has not voted on it, but it can go on the next agenda. Okay, I just want to be clear. I raised an issue with the way the bonding ordinance was amended. So we passed it out of committee with amendments that were expressed in the chart. Correct. That then got expressed as we are authorizing bonding for $225,000, which is not what we intended. We intended to authorize the full amount of $225,000, but bonding for only $150,000. So I'd like you to take a look at the at the uh, ordinance. I think that we need to make an amendment before we pass it. Mm -hmm. So um, Sarah did the change. Yeah. And I and I and I raised that then, and I don't know that anybody has made the correction to that before we voted on it because of this issue of maybe we need to go back and do the whole 225. Right. So do, we, do you have any amended language? It's just merely a matter of it lists the period of probable usefulness and, the, and it, it lists the, um, the maximum term of the bond and the maximum term of the bond, of the maximum amount of the bond should be $150,000, and that is not stated in there. So we so have to add that. It, it just needs to be changed from the 225 to the 150. Okay. But you could amend it as chair. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that gets taken care yeah. of before we pass it. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. Um, we are, and just the other pieces that are, are being removed from the list. Um, the building, the APD building improvements, um, the bridge improvements are being, also being removed, and then the $500,000 for the renovations of city buildings, um, that there's not, that's not tied to any specific product, uh, project, so thank you. Once again, Judy, for catching that and pushing that. Before we remove the 300000 for the APD, can we have some of the APD? Please come and, and... No, because this has to be... We have to pass all the bond ordinances on Thursday. So, so we, are, it's we are working with, with them on using, on using money to um, take care of the, the lead abatement bills. So, so that, that will be taken care of. Um, but it, will, it won't be taken care of. We're going we're gonna to find money to use for the letter paper. Where are you going to find the money from? Um, that money um, currently exists in um, old bonds within engineering that we're going to be able to allocate some of that with, and we're going to try to um, find some money within our operating budget. To they have $267,000 in authorized funding that last report that we got from you was not utilized. Now, that was intended for other projects, but we often have some money left over, which is one of the reasons why I think we should always think that we can be a little comfortable in taking money away from some of these bonding authorizations because they tend to overestimate, number one. And number two, you can usually find the money elsewhere in the budget, especially considering the last couple of years we've had surpluses. No guarantees on that. But. The other piece is a lot of departments would like um, engineering and uh, building improvements. It's not fair just because they came directly to us to have a special thing for that. Well, I mean, I have concerns with the way the bond is written with 30 years of it being a repayment process for 30 years. But I also have some serious concerns with us addressing the issues of maintenance and some of these 
facility. I completely I, agree. So I, I want assurances that that's going to be addressed. You know, we're going to be removing this. You know, we need some kind of assurances that that's going to be addressed this year. That the, the maintenance of the, the so last station? Yes. Okay. Um, the so, Alfredo, one of the ways of dealing with that is for you to send an email to Mike Wheeler and Brian Shea and Chief Hawkins and, and, you know, and copy Nick and the rest of us saying you want that assurance that it's going to be addressed. And then you get your email for what it is worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I understand that, yeah. but I just, you know, and I understand exactly what you're saying about that. But, okay, and that's what I'll do tonight. Thank you. Uh, but it's something that I can, I can follow up with you as well tomorrow. What's your last name, man? Riley. All right. All right. R I L E Y. Let right. me make sure I get the right name. Hey, Mr. Garrett. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, now that we have um, removed um, several items from our list, um, let's discuss 23.101.19, um, which is the APD vehicles. Um, the amount they did reduce, um, they were able to reduce 151500 so the new recommended amount for that is $1.205500. Dollars and I just um, one million two hundred five thousand five hundred dollars. One two one two zero five five zero zero. Okay. Glad to know I'm not the only one that has a hard time. <laughs> I appreciate I was, that, Judy. I'm like, and Judy would probably roll this right off her tongue, no, too. No, 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 no. I always have a, a problem that I start saying the numbers, and I'm yeah, like, it, it all yeah, happens. I was supposed to learn that in math. That was not, that was a verbal skill. That was not a math skill, as far as I was concerned, so I just wasn't good at it. Anyway. Um, so, we did get a bit more information from, um, well, a information, it's the last page in your packet about the special use vehicles. Um, Nick also said that he's working through um, he, the same process he went through with the fire department. He's going, he's starting to work through with APD on um, really looking at their fleet and kind of working that in. Um, I asked Nick to come and be if there's any questions about it. So this would be for the special use vehicles and also the regular vehicles. Um, they were, they looked into wrapping the regular vehicles into, um, into the operating budget, but because of timing with that, with the bonding and um, the actual budget, um, there's some concerns about vehicles and, and the timing for vehicles, making sure that our officers have um, the appropriate vehicles for, that they are planning Have they taken for. delivery of the vehicles that yet, of the vehicles that we bonded for in 2019? The ones, that they, the ones that they have bonded for and actually issued purchase orders for, yes, and they're being outfitted. They're still about four hundred thousand dollars left for, from that list that I gave you that have not been spent yet. It's, it's, it, they haven't even been ordered. Correct. So we haven't really taken I mean, delivery so, so what, because what we we're still because the outfitting of them is part of the entire process. Also. Correct. So, but but the the ones that were ordered are on site and are being outfitted at their facility. So. And, for the, the reason the reason it, it took so so long is because um, they we used to bond it in June July around that time and the certain vendors under state contract wouldn't be able to issue or issue a purchase order for them until the following year because they have a, 
a close-off date for new models. So um, the, because of the timing, the bond police was forced to wait until the next spring in order to get on with the next model of vehicles to order off of state contract. Mm -hmm. And now, since we're bonding in March this year, they will be able to get the POs out in time and receive the vehicles in 2020. If they were bonding in June, it would make sense to do what you were talking about. But. Okay. So then that what that means is we're actually accelerating the purchases. So this is not, my point has been that we make these annual purchases and it's on a certain schedule. Mm -hmm. So the schedule that we have been on, it seems as though it would be reasonable to have them be delivered in January of 2021. I think the issue though from my discussion with um, is that they don't want to be on that schedule anymore because they're having issues with ordering. So they're trying to change the schedule so that it matches with whoever sells these cars. Um, I, see what, I see what you are saying, though. Um, I, I, I would still stick with, you know, ideally we would like to change the schedule to receiving them um, in 2020. But I, I understand where you're coming from in, in the past because we had to wait. We, we wouldn't technically receive them if we had bonded in June. There would be a number of vehicles that we wouldn't receive until 2021. So by the schedule that they, that they have been receiving them in the past, then most likely that's the case. Um, but in, in an ideal world, we'd like to, to get them and then put them into to service in the same year. Which you could do in 2021. And, and then you would be able to do it on a cash basis. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I feel like I have raised a significant issue that I think was deserving of some sort of written response with regard to this whole issue of the $4.5 million um, and um, you know, being available for us to move things to the cash side. And so we're kicking the can on this issue that we have been advocating for for several years. The OSC raises uh, with other um, municipalities when they are bonding for it police vehicles, such mm -hmm. as Troy. Um, I've looked at other capital budgets. I'm not seeing a lot. I've looked at the, there's a national finance officers, government finance officers uh, organization that the Office of State Controller refers to. And basically it says, yeah, you can. This is a where you should be um, exerting a lot of caution. You can purchase vehicles on a essentially a payment plan, but you need to be watching out. And especially, you shouldn't generally be doing that when you are up against your debt service limits. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the position that we are in. Um, this actually puts us over our debt service limits um, uh, for uh, 2021. And that's all part of the reason why I was trying to be um, do some creative problem solving. But instead of maybe uh, you know keeping on the same schedule, what we're doing is we're looking to do another set of purchases early um, this year. Um, and I don't you know this is part of where a capital plan is supposed to have a timeline. Mm -hmm. We don't have a capital plan. We don't have a timeline. Um, so, I, you know, I, these oral conversations are nice, but I would like to see that timeline. Um, I would like to see the full explanation as to why we cannot do the purchase and um, put them on a schedule for purchase in 2021 so that we, because of the opportunity that we have. Mm -hmm. And that's that's my goal for when I, I go over to meet with, with police to discuss and, and build a, a vehicle replacement schedule faster, or in the same models of fire department, so it would be a schedule and, and, we, would, and we would have a lot more insight in, as to when vehicles are being replaced. Now, if you, if you were to break it down and, and do it in a similar 
model to what they have been doing in the past, then it would be no, I, and again, to, to talk to your point, it wouldn't be anything different than what's happened traditionally in terms of when they've received vehicles historically. Um, but from a, I guess from, a, from the way that we're looking at in the budget office is, is we would like to try and write the ship and have it be where they, they bond for it this year. With bonding in March, they're able, they're able to receive them at the end of the year. But I mean, again, again, this is this is this is your decision. But to to Judy's point, that if you were to wrap it into twenty twenty one, um, I mean, the the vehicles that are received in twenty twenty one might come a little later, but not I wouldn't say significantly later, because it, it would because they would they would they still wouldn't have bonded for it yet. So that that would be the one thing is is the is depending on when they would come in twenty twenty one would would be the effect that it would have on their operating budget when, in an ideal world, we'd like for them to have the cars in the year that they bonded for. So we would like for them to have it in 2020, but depending, and I, I, I can, I, I, I hate to say that and push it off further, but that would be something I would have to follow up with police on in terms of that, but. So um, the, this bond <coughs> we're looking at now is $1.2 million, and because we bond over the course of three years, this is a $400,000 payment every year for the next three years um, that adds to our overage. I mean, that it's, it's not like it's, you know, $100,000 over the debt service limits, but it makes it $400,000 over. We are eliminating any flexibility that we have and when you talk about writing the ship, <laughs> this is the opportunity to write the ship where we have these, um, you know, a, a few years where we've had an inordinate amount of bonding far exceeding what um, our real capacity is. Um, and so, again, I'm trying to do some uh, problem solving here. Um, uh, to partially help us uh, address this now and in the future. For, you know, so to the extent, the more this debt service limit issue is something that the more we move to the operating side now, the better off we are in the future because it sets a, sets a precedent uh, for that. And on something like this, the, the because we are Paying next year, we're going to pay be paying four hundred thousand dollars more in debt service. We could be taking that off of that, moving it to the operating side. So I am not convinced. I uh, I know we have a lot of different views on this, and I uh, I wish. To, um, I wish we had moved this to the operating side. And honestly, I don't care if we pay for this through fund balance or through bonds as much as I care that I want to make sure we just get this done. Um, and, you know, that's my biggest concern. And my concern is, you know, we have a lot of issues right now. Um, and our police department. Some in our police department do not believe they have support from this city hall, let's say. Um, and in many cases, if you look at the situation, you can say, you can understand why. Um, and I'm not even talking about, you know, those in leadership, I'm talking about those on the ground. Um, so when people on the ground feel like that, you know, I have problems with not making sure we give these officers all of the resources that uh, they need. Um, so I don't care if it's through fund balance, I don't care if we do it through bonding. And I understand we've been trying to get this out of bonding for the last three years. And I, I I just don't believe this is the time to make this 
specific bond to issue. If we want to talk about other bonds to take off the table, I'm open to that discussion. And maybe those are some of those bonds that, you know, you know, the, I, you know, I will we say this passed. is our last bonding I ordinance. That. So and, I and, and I that, I that's actually also, well there is a Skyway bonding ordinance which also puts us over our debt limit yeah. debt service limit. I well that's and that's going before the in this committee this is the last bonding I, I, ordinance. I understand. That. And I Alfredo I agree with you I think that this is um, it, it's when you this is something that directly impacts the rank and file and I'm not comfortable. Um, making an example of this that impacts our rank and file police officers and directly impacts safety for our citizens. So I personally would like to see this bond go through our committee. So the issue is not whether these are purchased. The question is how are they purchased? And I firmly believe that if we did not pass this bond, then the administration is going to figure out a way to address this situation to keep them reasonably on schedule with the purchase. Um, and, um, and, and we can be done here now and for the future with this whole issue of um, you know, put it in the operating budget. Put it in the operating budget from here on now. Uh, and, um, and, and that's, I mean, not the operating budget, but on the cash budget, essentially, rather than borrowing. It's, it really is silly. If it's on the cash budget, it's got to come from somewhere. I mean, the, it's going to come either from the fund balance or we're going to have to make a decision that's going to cut our budget by a million dollars. Or we're going to have to raise taxes a million dollars. Unless, unless there's a plan that we can work on in terms of before or during the budgeting process that says, hey, look, we are not going to approve this in 2021. You know, have a, have a plan ready. Because then, cause then that, that, that puts it on. But to, to, to do it now and say that we have, to, we have to find a way to do it within our budget, whether it's fund balance or... I think it sends a terrible could, message to the police officers, too. I have a question. How much is next year's capital budget for police vehicles? Can we look ahead to see a savings there? I, no. I have to, we can't. <laughs> Sorry, I just know. It's. Yeah, it, we, I mean, we've got the five. No, the five I, year plan. I and appreciate it, your. Yeah. Your argument. You know. But can we? It's one point two eight four million. And the year after that, it's one point one million. The year after that, it's one million. The year after that, it's one point two eight nine. So are we in the exact same position next next year, or is there a way out of it? The only way out of it, I hate to say this, is to use part of our fund balance and raise revenue. And but that's a one-time shot. That's not. This well, is an well, ongoing revenue. Right. What I'm looking at is how much do we pay in interest each year on this? Because this is not the intention. I believe our, our last our last bond issuance was two point eight three percent. Okay, and how much is that a year? It depends. It depends on the the size of the bond. So, so we've got three of these roughly one. So this this would probably bond. be around I would say thirty to thirty five thousand dollars of interest. And then you times that by three because you've got three years out. So you you we're, we're paying about a hundred hundred and ten to hundred and fifteen thousand roughly a year with interest. That will every year, so we'll pay for this every year. Mm -hmm. So by doing a one-time revenue increase and a one-time fund balance hit, you would actually get caught up pretty quickly. It would be a, it would be a three-time fund balance hit, but and well, there, there's but you finish paying one off. So when you finish paying that off, you finish paying that four hundred thousand. Well, so you have can, can we also go back to the Sorry. fact that I have pointed out that next year our debt service payments, because we're paying off a significant portion of the landfill <laughs> debt service, drop by four point five million dollars. So and and some of that will be needed for raises. But Mike sat here 
and when I ballpark to $3 million of that will need to be used for raises in 2021, he was kind of like, not a bad guess, I think is kind of what his reaction was. So that leaves $1.5 million that is, can be spent in a lot of different ways, but one of the ways is, is doing this. So it's not a matter of taking it out of the fund balance. It's a matter of you know, the, the cycling and the timing of this being accelerated this year to put, make the purchases and put in the purchase orders earlier than normal versus potentially putting it off into um, 2021. They may need some sort of assurance in advance to be able to be assured that in 2021, we're authorizing these you know, particular purchases so they can put in their purchase orders, but, um, you know, and, and make that commitment for the 2021 budget. I don't know what mechanism that is, but I think that, um, you know, I think that, uh, it, you know, to, to say that it has to come out of the fund balance or that we're not doing the purchases, um, you, you know, we're not keeping them on their same schedule is just um, not accurate. Um, now, we could take it out of the fund balance, um, and we could take it out of the fund balance essentially um, uh, on a temporary basis, essentially, because then you put it in the budget for the following. And the other thing is I want to note is that so you have $1.2 million in 2021. It's not, this is not a like when we say one shot deal where you, and it needs to be continued, you gotta keep in mind that you're gonna reduce next year the debt service payment by over $400,000. And then the following year, it will be reduced by eight hundred thousand dollars. And then the following year, it you know by the one point three million when you count it in the interest. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just looking at, at the future we are leaving people, and 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 the fact we're sitting here and going, oh, who cares about the debt service? The debt I don't think anybody is saying that. I just don't know that this is the right example to use. So where is the exemption in the debt policy? Where we, we, we're overriding the debt policy. Can we look at four, I mean, four, eight, one, two, two, one, nine. Was I'd it, actually like to take care of this. Like either we're going to pass it through the committee. No, 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 no. I thought, wasn't that one stating to reduce a bond by a million dollars? The last one. It wasn't we're, the last one to reduce the bond by a so million dollars. So that we're one, amending a bond. No, it's, a it's not, we're not gonna be able to find money. I, I, if we could deal with this one and then we can deal with that one, that would be helpful. So the, the, the last one is already included in my calculations for what I did up as a debt service chart that included the expectation that we're going to borrow about $5 million that has been previously authorized, but it included the elimination of $1 million for this particular move also. And we're not even doing $1 million. And that had us within like $100,000, $200,000 of our debt policy limit by my calculations for 2021. So what I'd like to do is either pass this through committee or not, and then we can move on to the next ordinance. But is well, there- I'll make a motion to pass this to the committee for 1205500. Can I get a second on that? If we could get a promise in the future for next year, we should, if we want to promise at this point, we should be passing a separate resolution. I think that what we can do is um, is have something in writing. I, I mean, I told the mayor that we are not, unless there was some movement to begin moving these vehicles into the operating budget, we are not going to pass any more um, bonds. And I think it is important to have that in writing. Yes. 
um, and I'm I'm very happy to to draft um, to draft uh, to have draft that so we can actually send that have it in writing so next year if that if they come to the table without any police cars move to the operating budget then we don't pass it and we bring out this letter and say you got this um, you're aware of this and this was a choice that you made. So, Councilman Ryan, one, one thing I can say is, is moving over to central budget, that is, that is something that, that I will be working on going forward, and it's something that um, talking to, to Mike in the mayor's office, something that I, I want to start a lot earlier. Our capital planning process, I want to loop in council leadership, and it's something that I, that I can tell you is, is again, we, w we would like to try to move this over to the operating budget. It's just, um, for, for me up here, I, I would like to see a, a plan done heading into next year's budget. Mm -hmm. um, the stuff that, that Judy, that Judy's talking about are things that are above above my pay grade to, to talk about. Um, but again, going going forward, I mean, the solutions that, that I can tell you is that that's something that, I, that we want to work towards as a budget office. Definitely, we want to move this this over. Um, it, but again, it's, it's it's in the future. Um, everything that, Ju that that Judy's recommending as solutions are things that I can't I can't say yes to or or hurrah to. But I, I'll, I'll tell you that that's something that we do want to work towards. And I agree that having something in writing is important. So what I'd be willing to second is a motion moving it out of committee. You didn't say it has to be fairly long to move it out of committee. That's fine. Um, yeah. With the condition that there is going to be some kind of letter offered by council yep. leadership strongly expressing the concerns about uh, the policy of moving this into operation expenses. So I would second that. Okay. I I, I, that's the motion I put, and um, I agree because I do have a problem with us spending 115,000 a year in interest, and to me, it's kind of like paying your your electric bill on your credit card, and then paying your credit card the minimum payments. It's a never ending. Um, Getting bigger, bigger. Yeah. 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 Um, I cannot guarantee that I'll have the letter for everyone to look through by Thursday, but um, it is something that but I think we need to... you will verbally commit when this is up for a Absolutely. Uh, and I will endeavor. I'll see if JR and mm -hmm. I can work on some letter writing. and um, I'd like to have it done by Thursday if it's possible. Um, so all in favor? Uh, as council members, Ballerin. What's your vote, Judy? O'Brien and Farrell in favor of. And I'm opposed. And Judy Adichie opposed. Um, motion I'm passes. Not opposed to the purchase. I'm just opposed to bonding for it. Um, now let's move on to 48.122.19. Um, the budget office um, did agree with a $500,000 reduction, which is different than the million dollar reduction. Um, it's one of the reasons I asked uh, someone to come so that they could talk and dig in with Judy a bit more with it. Because uh, there's definitely... I wish I, I had these kind of money where $500,000 wasn't that big of a deal, but... I don't think any of us are there, nor is our beautiful city. So I noted um, that the email didn't address the fact that a number of the items for equipment is really technically um, PPUs of five years. Um, and the bonding ordinance, I believe, is a is a 15 year. The, you know, the 2018. Um, and so I, there were two items in the listing. So yeah, it's 15 years. Um, third of probable usefulness. And if you look at the chart that you guys provided, virtually everything in the way of equipment it, you have down for like an eight to ten year. And we're not supposed to borrow 
you know, it's it's you know, it's it's like buying a car. You don't borrow it, buy it, and borrow on 15 years if you expect it to die within 10 years, uh, because then you keep on paying for something that you're no longer seeing the benefit of. That's just that's you know one of the protections of the local finance law. So so I, I again no no lawyer I'm not trying to. Play one. Uh, but, um, sorry, no, no, I'm sorry no, no. that you feel like I keep on lawyering. No, up. no, 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 no. No, I, I'm just saying it from from um, there's a there's a section that says there's supposed to be some sort of a weighted average, and, and all the equipment bonds that DJS had passed have, haven't. They're not all 15 years. They're not, they're not all 10 years. There's a there's a combination of tens, eights, twelves, fifteens that are that are all merged together. So. Um, I'm, again, this is this is a 2018 bond, but I I am aware that there were some equipment items that had a 15-year useful life, some equipment that had a 10-year useful life. They weren't all uniform in their their equip, their useful life, their PPUs of all, every single item that composed the the ask for that year. So I, I don't I don't know what what to say about that, but it's not like everything was was 15 years, and it, and it hasn't it hasn't been that way. Looking at uh, the items that DGS has provided. But, but Judy, you started this and you concluded that most of this equipment is only going to be good for eight years if you're using the that's, that's what it says um, on, on, on the charts that, they so, provide. On the stuff yeah. that, that DGS provides, it, it, there's, a, there's a column that talks about um, New York State's uh, Comptroller's Office recommended useful life, and then it goes on to say the, the lifespan that DGS takes out of it, which is the, 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 common, the common jump, I guess, is um, Comptroller's Office says it's an eight-year useful life, and DGS is saying most of them are a 10-year useful life. The majority aren't, aren't 15 years. This is a 15-year bond, so right. whether it's eight or 10 years, it's... But then again, that, that's some items. There's, there's, there's a few items that are 15. There's a lot that are 10. There's, I don't think there's any that DGS has listed as, as an eight-year PPU. The, the state says a lot of them are eight. But there's some that are 12. It's not entirely 15. And it's not entirely 10 or 8. So. And this is, this is a, again, a 2018 bond. It was the same in, in 19. So some of the things that are being purchased with this is like radios. Actually, it says one. Units requested, one radio, $40,000? Is this from 2018 or is this from 2020? I am, I, I, I'm looking at, I you know, printed out something that doesn't have that title, but let me look at this other chart, 2020. I'm really impressed you can read that. Yeah, I know. It's probably one of my So it's, ones. it's like, <laughs> it's like two so point font. <laughs> it has radios, it's been, they've been purchasing radios in 2018, 2019, 2020, and they plan to keep on purchasing radios with bonding money in 2021 and 2022, essentially similar amounts. I'm looking at you because sometimes I, I wish I wish you guys would scrub these um, bond requests a little bit more because that just strikes me as an operational cost. Um, so in 2020, so the, the, sh the sheet that I'm looking at is, the, the first sheet is correct for what I'm seeing on this smaller chart for 2020. So generally, so I, so I do want to say that I understand what you're saying about there will be different useful lives mm -hmm. for things. And regardless of what we approve something on as on a PPU, when we say the local, you know, per pursuant to the local finance law, a PPU of 15, the treasurer has an obligation of actually determining the useful life and not borrowing beyond the useful life. Mm 
The problem with that is we, as the finance board, are being asked to authorize these purchases with a PPU of 15 years. Um, when, when in reality, some of these may even have like you know, useful life is something closer to five years, um, depending upon how much they're used and that kind of thing. And generally, the the Common Council has taken a position, Joe Igo has sat here, and this is before your time, when he was on the Finance Committee, um, and basically said, the Common Council has said basically, we're not bonding for things worth less than thirty thousand dollars so we have here a listing for the golf course of you know a john deere hydro of twenty thousand dollars a club car turf two for fourteen thousand dollars a cushman core harvester for twenty thousand dollars a toro park master for twenty thirty thousand dollars a tufco meat matic for seventeen thousand dollars so anyway, the, the, the two more significant purchases here are the skid steer with attachments, 64000 and a loaded mounted snowblower, $190,000. And those are a little bit more in keeping with what you would expect to see, something that for which bonding is being requested. Mm -hmm. And so that comes to $254,000. And I was suggesting that we we reduce the bond to allow for that plus what has already been encumbered, you know, previously. Mm -hmm. um, that there might be a little bit of an ouch factor there, but I'm particularly sensitive to the fact that certain members of the Common Council have not appreciated how much money gets spent on golf course materials, and they want generally they want to see. Um, the revenue coming in, the revenue for the golf course was down this past year. Um, so all that is factoring into my thinking in terms of what I was looking at in terms of a recommendation that I thought I could feel comfortable with knowing some of the past dialogue of, of the Common Council mm -hmm. um, on this. I also note that you're reducing it to a uh, half million dollars and the total that actually was identified for this is four hundred and sixty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So even you know, so we have thirty five thousand dollars that isn't even necessarily needed except for I know you guys like to have that cushion on it. So so I mean if you'd like to, you know, still have I mean, again, some of those golf items are are fairly low. Um, would you be inclined to, instead of reducing it two hundred sixty-four thousand, just reduce the the one hundred one thousand for the, the golf course equipment, and we could we could find that. Well, then that leaves the radios in. So, how do people feel about bonding for radios when we're up against our debt limit? Not our constitutional debt limit, our debt policy limit. Um, when when we're exceeding our So what if again those are those are radios that are specific towards the vehicles. They're they're it's not like handheld radios. They're the ones that actually go in there. The comm systems in the in the trucks and the vehicles and the snow plows. A little bit more. Is that one radio? Or is that tiny. I believe it's. I believe oh, you it's changed it to a different page. I don't even yeah. know what that is. So you know, the radios are on that same page. Oh, so I have it upside down. Yeah, <laughs> right there. It's so hard. It's because it's so tiny. Yeah, that's why I turned it over. I turned it back the way I saw it. I mean, oh, God. Trudy, is that one radio for 40000 It's several? a set of, it's like 10 of them, so it's like 40000 No, it doesn't say that. The 10 over here oh, I'm sorry. That's, 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 is the, the PPU. service life. That's the PPU, I'm sorry. You, the, the, yeah. well, can, do, do you know? I don't know off the top of my head about how many are on there. I know what the, the total is, but um, I, I'd have to follow up with... Uh, Gable House from DGS on the exact quantity. And how much is the, how much is the radio? Forty thousand dollars a year. So that's well, so it's roughly three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Two nine, two nine four. 
Yeah, so say 300,000. So that would be reducing it by 700,000 as opposed to a million. Not really, because they've encumbered, they've encumbered 1.007 million. So does that include 2020? Um, there might be, because I, I, again, that's, a, that's again a, a static number. I might have to find, I think there's a couple that might have some 2020 in there, but I, I'd have to. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. The project balance is 100. And, I'm sorry. I'm working off different numbers. So basically, it's um, 7, 9, 7, 9, 2 plus 254. So you're right. It, 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 it's really 800,000. If, if we, the total is 956. Um, and so to to reduce it, to leave it at essentially a million dollars, and reduce it by the eight hundred thousand mm dollars, -hmm. By eight hundred thousand instead of a million. Is that what we're? Mm -hmm. So kind of flipping the two numbers. Yeah. So basic. So basically, it would be one million dollars. So we're reducing the total bond to one million dollars. Mm -hmm. There's a part of me that wants to give them a little bit of flex in this. I mean, I'm, I bet I'd look at the of these and it's like. So I, my recommendation is that we reduce it to 1.05, give them another $50,000, really, another, essentially another $100,000 to cushion the blow. So I move to... Um, Amend or or uh, pass forty eight point one two two point one nine MC out of committee with a positive recommendation, with the maximum estimated cost being amended to one million and fifty thousand uh, dollars, both for the maximum estimated cost and maximum amount of bonds, and then also in section two. Uh, the plan of financing objects um, or purposes is lease financing or the issuance of, again, it's um, $1,050,000. In serial bonds. So there's three places where that is that number is being changed, including in the title. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
That is unanimous. Motion passes. Oh. I believe that is everything. That's we're not uh, we're not passing this through. So the bridge that's already been removed, and um, there was not any specific the twenty nine point one zero one point one nine. That five hundred thousand dollars was not assigned to any specific building. Um, that's something that Randy wanted for emergencies, and um, it's. Uh, so 28 and 29 for Well, I mean, they will be, but um, yeah, they're not. So they're being moved, but 28 29? We're not, we're not moving them. Okay. We'll be removing them. Um, okay. Withdrawing them. Withdrawing them, yes. So the only ones you moved out tonight is 23 and 48? Yep. And 22 was already out? But 22 was it? already out at 150000 So you have met that? Um, correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just so Chairwoman, just for clarification, twenty two is being amended from twenty two two five is gonna to be to one fifty. Okay. Correct. Okay. That was already passed through the committee at that right. level. I think Sarah already made those amendments, but I'm just yeah, well, again, she made the change, but then I noted the so if you know, we'll make it because it's it's so it's, here's, me catching on to the see process. here, <laughs> yeah. So, see here, it says maximum estimated cost, maximum amount of bonds. So, when it came to maximum amount of bonds, she still had 225,000. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, it, but she she made maximum amount of cost to be 150. Which we really meant the reverse. Mm -hmm. okay. Excellent. So I think that's it for tonight. Does anybody have anything else before I adjourn the meeting? Mm -hmm. I, I did want to know one thing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be voting to go over. Our debt ceiling, or whatever the term may be, do we need to have a resolution stating that? I'm not sure. I think we should. Um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's actually doing that. If we go over our debt policy, then. The policy itself probably needs to be amended. I'm remembering how my teachers. Men. Would you mind looking into that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Write numbers carefully, because <laughs> it does make a difference. <laughs> we also get, um, My penmanship is never good. Figures. Um, actually, we have to have my. What? I'll just look up exactly how much we get reimbursed. Long term from all these. Oh, right. From. Uh, uh, yeah. So my chart that I provide everybody with has the reimbursement, has the full debt service in there for everything for three years, and then backs out everything that is subject. Yeah, but it, doesn't it does not include, my calculations do not include uh, the Skyway or um, any of these projects that we had here, and it had an extra $250,000 in um, reduction from the equipment bond. So, I mean, the proof will be in the pudding with whatever we pass and then whatever shows up in the budget in the way of scheduled uh, debt payments next year. Mm -hmm. All right, well, the meeting adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. And we are done.